Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Infinity, and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course, the law of attraction. So right away, as I was shuffling for this reading, the two of cups in the reversed position came out and I did hear the term twin flame. So it's very possible that this is a twin flame situation for the group of souls I'm speaking to here. I also just saw the letters H-A-R-V, so those could be letter initials involved for someone, although of course, whenever I channel very specific initials, dates, details, etc., these tend to be for very specific people, so only take what connects with you personally. I'm getting a lot of reversed cards right away following this two of cups reversed at the bottom of the deck, so... I also got the message that for whoever I'm speaking to here, I'm speaking to a connection that felt really happy and fulfilling to your soul at a deeper level. And yet in the physical 3D world, there were certain ways in which you felt like you weren't being provided for by the counterpart in this situation. So it's almost as though your soul was being fed and nourished and expanded through this connection, but your physical human self wasn't being supported. And for whoever I'm speaking to as well, I hear someone saying, I wanted to just deny my human aspect of myself to continue my connection with this person because it was so beautiful and so aligned and so fulfilling at that soul level, but your needs were so not being met to almost the extreme here in the physical 3D world. So of course, this could look different for different individuals that I'm speaking to here, but I'm also picking up that even emotional needs may have not been met by this person in the 3D. I feel that whoever you are listening to this reading, it's very likely that you will connect as the divine feminine. And the person that I'm speaking about will connect as a divine masculine counterpart. Again, I am very strongly feeling a twin flame situation for many of you, although that may not be the case for all. Now, with this 10 of wands reversed, it feels like something became too heavy to carry here. And specifically, the divine feminine in this situation may have felt as though she was trying to carry this weight on her own. As I'm channeling into this, I'm getting a really intense loneliness and also a heaviness here as well. With the king of wands reversed, I feel that this could represent the masculine counterpart in this situation in a very wounded state. I keep getting something about a lie or dishonesty, so it could have been that this masculine was dishonest in the physical with his communication. I'm hearing dishonest by omission, so in some cases, he may have just not been communicative enough in general in the physical 3D world, and this caused a divine feminine here to feel emotionally abandoned. With Queen of Pentacles in the reverse position, I also see that the masculine being in this King of Wands reversed energy, this possibly deceptive energy, but what I'm really getting is a tremendous amount of self-focus. Now, I am hearing trauma response, so I am picking up that the reason the masculine here was so self-focused is because of some kind of past trauma in his life or in relationships, most likely very early in his life. I'm getting that in most cases, this is inner child trauma, inner child wounding that caused this masculine to act in ways that were deceptive. And I'm getting that at the core of that deceptiveness was 
I'm almost seeing like this scared little child who was afraid to reveal their true self fully for fear of being abandoned. However, of course, when the masculine in 3D acted in this way, not fully being open, not fully communicating, I see that this pushed the divine feminine here into a queen of pentacles reversed energy. It's almost like being with this person was blocking your abundance because it was blocking your receptive energy. The awakened divine feminine is, of course, very naturally receptive However, I'm picking up that in this situation, you were required to do all of the giving, perhaps even a great deal of the providing. I keep hearing provider, so you, Divine Feminine, may have actually felt like a provider for this masculine, almost as though you were trying to play the role of his mother figure in kind of a strange way. I know this is a very specific reading and message, so as I always say, only take this if it does connect with your own intuition. Now, I usually say this at the beginning, but if you are connecting to the readings so far, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and to like the video. This does allow me to pick up more easily on your energy and I tend to be able to channel more specifically for you when you are subscribed to the channel and when you do like the video as well. So I did want to mention that there. I'm getting the letters M-A-R-T-H. I heard the name Martha specifically, so this could be someone's name. Someone could have a name with one of these letter initials. But circling back to you being almost like this mother figure, it's almost like you were trying to heal a mother wound in this masculine by showing up in almost this maternal provider role. But the problem here is I feel that the masculine was using that dynamic like a crutch instead of for the purpose of healing. So whereas he was supposed to take that healing energy and receive it and allow it to work through him and to transform him into this emperor because here we have the emperor card as well to awaken him fully into this divine masculine being that he came here to embody and to be your counterpart on the throne as the divine feminine that you are that is the track, the pathway that your souls intended to take in this life but I see that the masculine in his human form I'm hearing chose, for some reason I'm getting the word laziness. He may have come off as being lazy, but really what I'm getting is he was heavily traumatized and because of that trauma, he really turned in on himself and became a taker of your energy rather than allowing that energy to heal him and transform him. It seems as though he took it for granted and allowed that dynamic where you divine feminine were over giving and over self-sacrificing to continue much longer than it was supposed to occur. As a result, I see that you, Divine Feminine, began feeling that something was very off here. Again, I just keep getting the sense that you were carrying the burden of the healing here, the burden of the emotional labor, and possibly even physical material labor in this connection, all on your own. That Ten of Wands reversed is just really standing out here, representing the extreme heaviness that you felt around this mass and around this situation. The other thing that happened here is the King of Wands reversed energy within this masculine counterpart, that energy of being really self-focused, of taking, of possibly being dishonest, triggered your Queen of Pentacles reversed energy and caused you to feel really insecure within yourself. That word insecurity is really standing out here. You may have believed that something was wrong with you because you were feeling so insecure, but I'm actually picking up that it was an automatic triggered counter reaction to this masculine being very much in that wounded king of wands reversed energy. You also may have 
felt the need to just give up on this situation in 3D altogether. It reached a point where you felt you were carrying everything for so long that you most likely ultimately felt as though you just had to let go. However, the thing is, I feel that you always held this masculine's higher self energy in your heart represented here by the emperor because you always knew the potential of this connection and the potential of what this masculine could embody if he were to choose to heal himself but you also finally were delivered the message from your spirit guides consciously or subconsciously that it was not your job to heal this person and that in fact the only way to motivate them to heal themselves would to be to let go in 3D or to surrender, to possibly even walk away from this person or situation, at least temporarily, to create the space for them to choose healing, to choose growth. And I just keep hearing you can't choose it for them. With the card release your ex here, the time has come to clear your energy. I feel that this masculine's refusal to heal when the two of you were more closely involved in 3D actually began affecting your abundant energy, divine feminine, your receptive energy. Again, you were so much in an unnatural, wounded, feminine, overgiving, over self sacrificing kind of space that. Your abundance was most likely being very blocked. You may have felt as though things in your life were beginning to go wrong or that you were struggling to attract in what you really desired or at least to attract it in effortlessly. You may have gotten into this energetic pattern of belief that you had to overgive and overwork yourself even to manifest. So even if you were actively harnessing the power of the universe to manifest through energy alignment, you most likely while with this masculine still held on to the belief that you had to be constantly overworking yourself, constantly burning yourself out to manifest these goals and dreams. And while it's possible you may have seen results from that very effortful manifestation, you are now beginning to discover the power of effortless manifestation. You are beginning to really lean back into your receptive energy, which is your natural state as the healed, awakened, divine feminine energy that you're beginning to embody and you're discovering that it can be much more effortless and easy and fun and playful to manifest your goals and dreams than you may have allowed yourself to believe in the past. I'm hearing going with the flow of your life. So you may be feeling almost as though you're drifting at this point, possibly in a state of conflict at times, because while you're beginning to feel very abundant, very effortless about your life, while you are beginning to enjoy more ease and peace in your day-to-day -day life, most likely still at some kind of distance or disconnect from this particular masculine, you are also missing his potential. You are missing that emperor energy that you caught glimpses of when the two of you were together. Possibly there may have been a time in your 3D relationship with this masculine or your 3D connection if you weren't ever in a traditional relationship where you actually saw him beginning to embody that emperor energy even in his physical 3D form. I'm hearing you caught glimpses of it somehow, whether that was in your true physical connection or interaction with this masculine or whether it was through equally real but more esoteric and subconscious interactions in the astral realm telepathy the fifth dimension etc but somehow you caught clear glimpses of who this masculine could be what he could become but again this is all 
really hinging on the masculine here, choosing his own growth, choosing his own healing. So oftentimes I pick up that for the feminine I'm channeling into, you experience this pain of being one who has awakened faster, who has healed faster. I'm getting that you chose to heal your own wounded patterns and dynamics. In fact, you may have even chosen to heal parts of yourself that used to connect in a wounded way with this masculine that allowed for more physical 3D interaction, but in a very wounded way between the two of you. I know this sounds really complex. I don't know who I'm speaking to here, but it feels that for someone in the past, there may have been more physical 3D communication or interaction with this masculine, but a lot of it was coming from a wounded space. So you being a chaser, as we say, you stepping into more of a codependent energy, you acting or reaching out out of fear you've now begun to really fully release all of those fear-based limiting patterns from within yourself, those patterns of low self-confidence, those patterns of low self-worth, and you've replaced them with radical and unconditional self-love. So now in order to fully approach you and to consistently interact with you in the physical 3D world, this masculine must choose to heal himself and expand himself because unless he is embodying the energy of love, meaning unconditional love, he is going to struggle to make a connection with you in 3D to come towards you because you are on this entirely different frequency. Now, the thing is, the whole time you divine feminine at this higher frequency are connecting with the higher frequency version of this masculine. So while in 3D, it still seems very likely he's in his wounded state, you are energetically connecting with his emperor energy. I'm seeing the number 444. I'm also picking up that sometimes you might wake up with sadness or even tears in your eyes, or you might cry in the morning because overnight, consciously or subconsciously, you were connecting with this masculine's higher self energy with his divine energy. And I'm feeling this wave of emotions. I'm almost feeling myself starting to tear up because I feel that it's a very bittersweet feeling for you, Divine Feminine, to yes, be happily and confidently embodying this higher frequency state of being, but at the same time, connecting with a version of this masculine that is a far cry from the energy he's consciously embodying at this time in the physical 3D world because right now there is still a lot of wounded patterning. It's almost like a parent seeing a child self-sabotage themselves and wanting to help them but knowing that they have to learn on their own. For some reason, I'm seeing a parent with a child that's learning to walk and they're kind of stumbling and then falling down and the parent desperately wants them to learn to walk and knows that they will, but they also know that if they're constantly acting as a crutch, then they're never going to learn how to stand on their own two feet and how to find their stability at the core and to walk on their own. And I know it's not a perfect metaphor, but I almost feel that's what it's like being the awakened twin as I feel you are divine feminine in this situation, being the one who has awakened first and faster and who has healed themselves energetically to the point where you now have this kind of bird's eye perspective on what is going on with this masculine that both intuitively speaks to you telling you that you must not go towards him and try to be that crutch, but at the same time that shows you so clearly what his higher potential could be. I just keep hearing it's the pain of the awakened soul. In fact, this is a bit of a side message and I just saw the angel number 1919 for someone. This might be a bit of a side message, but I'm picking up that you divine feminine actually experienced this quote unquote pain of the awakened soul 
a lot, not just in this situation with a divine masculine counterpart, but also in your daily life, because you are always capable of seeing the true potential of others, even if they themselves are not choosing to embody that potential in 3D. And at the same time, just like with this divine masculine, you are not able to be that crutch or to be that bridge to to uh, be another's highest potential for them. You can be an empowerer. You can be an uplifter. You can inspire them to that potential. You can hold space for it. But ultimately, we all have free will here incarnated on earth and others must choose to take those steps of growth and healing to empower themselves to that higher potential. And this can actually create a lot of pain because there's always this cognitive dissonance when you're connecting with others where you can see them for their highest potential, for their highest timeline possibility. You can see them for what they could possibly be and become but others aren't always willing or ready to fully embody that potential that you see within them. So there's typically this disconnect you experience when you connect with others between who they are being and how they are speaking and behaving in real time in the physical world on this earth plane and what through your third eye you are perceiving their potential to be or the potential of your connection with them to be. Others around you may sometimes even say that you're too idealistic or that you see the best in others to a fault or that you live on potential too much romantically or platonically, but it's actually a really beautiful gift that you have, even though it does cause you pain from time to time. It's truly rare and beautiful to be able to connect with the highest potential within others and to hold that space for them which really catalyzes them, inspires them to aim at that higher potential within themselves and know that you really do have that impact on other people, even if at times you don't get to consciously witness them taking those action steps to become that higher version of themselves. Perhaps the two of you go different ways or are disconnected in the physical world Know that the ripple effect of this ability you have to see this potential in others and hold space for it is profound and extends far further than you may fully consciously realize. Again, I know that that was a bit of a random side message, but I really hope that reached to ever needed to hear it. Now, I am going to close this reading with one final Rumi Oracle card. I really love to close all my readings with Rumi. This guidebook and this Oracle deck are so beautiful. They're really artistic as well. I really recommend exploring this deck on Amazon or something like that. If you are into tarot yourself, it's a really beautiful and inspiring deck. But anyway, while I am shuffling, I also want to share with you that I have recently launched my brand new app, Sound and Soulful. On this app, I have a library of subliminal meditations. For those of you who don't know, subliminals are affirmations embedded within other tones, sounds, and frequencies that are targeted to the subconscious mind. So while you're listening, you won't be able to fully consciously hear the affirmations, but that actually allows them to bypass that conscious filter of the mind and make deeper, more lasting impressions on the subconscious mind which research has shown it's actually the subconscious that controls 95% of our thoughts, actions, and outcomes in life. So reprogramming your subconscious mind with subliminals is a really powerful way to entirely reprogram your energetic field, magnetize yourself for your desires, and manifest exponentially fast I personally have seen profound results from using subliminals daily for years now. And if you download and sign up for my app at this time, 
you will get a seven day free trial period. After that, it will be $19 and 99 cents a month. So I do really recommend trying it for seven days, seeing the power of subliminals and really of your own subconscious mind and the results from that. So again, the name of the app is Sound and Soulful. You can search it in either app store. You can also download it using the link in the pinned comment and description box. I do have an entire category of subliminals on the app for Twin Flames, by the way. And if you're connecting with this reading as a twin flame, I would specifically recommend either my twin flame seven chakra clearing or my subliminal called the awakened divine feminine. And you can actually combine these subliminals into your own custom private playlists on the app as well if they both resonate with you. You can even read the affirmations by clicking the affirmations card button while you are listening to the messages and listening to these subliminal tracks. So I am so excited to be sharing this app with all of you and appreciative of all of you who are using it and loving it so far. So to close this reading, we have the card Divine Discontent. And I do see, by the way, there may be a little bit of a part two to this reading, or at least in the next reading, there may be some continuation messages because I'm picking up on more information from the masculine, specifically his thoughts and feelings in the 3D, because I'm picking up a lot of discontentment from the masculine who's been coming through this reading, but also with this card saying divine discontent, I see that there's a cosmic purpose to that feeling of discontent in the masculine here, specifically that discontent in your absence, Divine Feminine, or feeling a bit disconnected from you in 3D is actually pushing him to heal, to make that choice to heal, to begin embodying more of that emperor energy that came out in this reading. So let me just close here with a message from the Rumi guidebook. Winter falls upon us, so spring can bring new growth. Cry the tears, allow the longing, sadness brings surrender and a deep desire to be free, Rumi. And the guidebook also says, I know your heart. I hear it breaking and groaning in darkest night when you imagine yourself to be silently cast adrift in sleep. It speaks to me, that sacred heart of yours whispering its longing and bemoaning its divine discontent. This is the pain of the awakening heart. That heart is capable of bliss and ecstatic reverence for the sheer beauty and wonder of creation. Yet, as the heart matures, there will be a process of deep, passionate longing that awakens for the divine. It is the impatience for the caress of the great lover, for the presence of the divine to come to you. And the guidebook also says, You are just waking from the deepest slumber, and with your awakening heart, you are realizing a truth, a part of you deeper and wider, vaster and more instinctive, truthful and intelligent than your mind, is lonely for the divine embrace. And so it shall be. The discontent divine growing within you is not the ending. It is the beginning, not the destiny. Its purpose is to lead you into your greatest connection yet with divinity look beyond what is. So that feels like a beautiful place to close this reading. I do recommend subscribing if this reading connected with you so you get notified when I do post another reading because I feel there will be many continuing messages in that next reading. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Magnetize Yourself where I post more mini readings, energy updates, and pieces of inspiration. 
Otherwise, I am sending you all so much love today. I hope you have a really beautiful rest of your day and I will connect with you here again in the next.